Hi, everybody. Thanks for taking a few minutes to be with us today. We appreciate it very much. I'm Tim Anderson, the appraiser's advocate, and we're here today with Mike Holzheimer, main head honcho, head writer, and top dude over at Valuation Review Magazine. Mike, how are you this morning? I'm fine, Tim. How are you? And thank you for having me on the program. Oh, thank you for being here. I appreciate it very much. As you can see by the background, we're just after Thanksgiving, and uh, we're still enjoying that the last little bit of afterglow of all that great turkey and dressing and, and way too much food, but we enjoyed it. Uh, Mike, before we get into the meat of, of what's going on, uh, take a few minutes uh, to tell us about yourself and Valuation Review Magazine and, and why all the appraisers should be reading it. Well, thank you again, Tim. Uh, uh, I'm Mike Holzheimer. I'm starting my uh, fifth, I should, I'm sorry, uh, fifth year with uh, October Research. I am the editor of the appraiser publication that we have titled Valuation Review. Um, I've been in journalism most of my career. Uh, I actually did some sports writing for uh, quite a bit of, uh, of that career. Did some news as well. Uh, so uh, I'm not an appraiser, but I'm a journalist that researches and talks to appraisers, uh, telling our audiences what you know they believe is happening, what other appraisers should know, and most importantly, what they can do to uh, improve and enhance their, their business. And of course, given what's going on around the country today, uh, enhancing one's business has become even more, more important and very important. Uh, you know, uh, something that appraisers are going to want to know. Uh, so I have uh, really enjoyed uh, my, my time with the company. I've met a great, uh, great amount of people uh, in the appraisal industry. And I enjoy talking to people such as yourself to, you know, uh, alert our audience. Uh, it's so much what valuation review is saying or thinking. It's what the people we talk to are saying and thinking. We bring the expert opinions to the reader, to the audience, and uh, that's what Valuation Review was all about. And uh, between, you know, feature stories and just general announcements, uh, we try to keep our audience updated to the best of our ability. Now, Mike, you mentioned that, uh, well, you're not an appraiser. That is basically to, to use what I, I guess is still a journalism term. That's your beat. That's what you do. Right. Now, you and I met a number of years ago. I think we met up in uh, at the Axe Conference in Nashville uh, right. two or three years ago, and we chatted up there, and uh, we got to know each other a little bit. Now, in writing for Valuation Review Magazine, you're ta you're you're coming at, at thirty thousand feet. You know we're we're on the ground. We're down here. We're a lot of times we're lost in the in the trees. You're up at thirty thousand feet. You're getting a, a a different view of what's going on than we get, which is one of the reasons that we're here today. So the appraiser can look up in the air and say, "Oh, look, there is somebody up there who looks at this differently than we do." So let's get the advantage of your thoughts, your your perspective from 30,000 feet on some issues that are affecting appraisers today. Let's take this one. Given the technological changes taking place relative to big data and the ability to analyze big data, how important is the real estate appraiser going to be five and 10 years from now? Well, I'll tell you, Tim, um, you know, you and I had a chance to, uh, you know, collaborate on a, on a story that will soon be uh, available. In fact, it's hitting today's online edition of Valuation Review, if I may say. Um, there is the, the understanding and the notion of relevancy and appraisers need to be relevant moving forward. Um, and I think that, you know, that's going to require uh, an enhancement of education, of a skill level, um, and a, a, a more thorough understanding of the technology. You know, the, 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 the big data and the, the numbers, uh, you know, can all be there, but do we understand it? Do appraisers understand it? Do they know how to accumulate that data? You know, technology is wonderful, but it's only as good as the knowledge that goes behind it. You know, people have to know how to use it. Um, you know, the, in the, the area of automated valuation uh, models, uh, the AVMs, uh, artificial intelligence, 
you know, that's also going to be an area where appraisers have to be cognizant of the fact that they need to, I guess, for uh, lack of a better term, and maybe an old sports writing term of mine, step up their game uh, to, to have that knowledge. Um, you know, there, there's the, the understanding that appraisers may have to learn how to use uh, multivariable regression analysis in a manner that goes beyond the AVM. Um, so, you know, I, I think that these models uh, are, are great and, and they're all there to provide assistance. But at the end of the day, the appraiser still needs to be the one that is there to inspect the property and provide that, you know, true value of opinion uh, based on their experience. And I, I just don't think that, you know, that's going to be replaced, but that does not mean to suggest that uh, appraisers aren't going to have to be more in tuned uh, as to, you know, what, what's happening uh, in the world of technology. Um, again, in the pandemic conditions and all the restrictions, that's just further enhanced that notion that, you know, we, we, have, we have to adapt. And I think I've also seen, just to close out uh, my answer to this question, I certainly have seen, based on the people I've talked to, uh, for a number of stories, we've seen more of an acceptance uh, of technology as opposed to a reluctance. Okay, so what you're saying then is, uh, perhaps slowly, but nevertheless, progressively, appraisers are taking a look at the technological technological process. Excuse me, the technological. I can't speak English. It's early in the morning. The uh, the the technical processes that are that have gone on, and again, maybe slowly, but they are adapting them. So, is is that where you're going with your answer? Yes, I I think that you know. I, I go back to um, one of our uh, annual special reports at Valuation Review, Voice of the Appraiser, which just came out in October. You know, I, I would see comments and I would hear people say that, you know, I've always done it this way. I, I, I don't want to really take the time to learn. It's, you know, extra tools at the job site. It's cumbersome. Well, we're seeing a shift in that. Not everybody is on board, but we're seeing more and more people adapt to ways that will help them do their jobs better. And now with many restrictions that are in place, I think that, you know, there's no choice but to, you know, get on board and use the tools that are available and the many new tools that are coming out there now. Okay, let's continue with that thought. And let's go to the concept of, of relevancy. Okay, now given what you just explained to us, what is it the appraiser will have to learn and what skills will the appraiser have to master and demonstrate in order to stay relevant with the typical mortgage lending client and then as a as an ancillary question to that question what is it we're going to have to do to be able to continue to provide that client with the benefits that they cannot get from, say, for example, an AVM. Right. Well, you know, going back to uh, my school days, Tim, I don't know about your school days, but we all had favorite subjects and maybe not so favorite subjects. Well, math was never a strong suit of mine, but I think that's going to be an area where the appraiser, you know, has to step up and, and have the ability to, you know, not just figure out how to come up with certain st or certain statistics, but in doing so, there's an understanding of what those statistics mean. Um, you know, statistics are a great tool uh, to help with a value conclusion. Um, but you know, again, the appraiser has to have that knowledge and the understanding of how to do it, how to analyze it, so that they can better communicate that method and those results to the client. You know, the, the, the clients want assurance that, well, you know, how did you come up with this? Or is this the, the, the best route to take? And, you know, appraisers are just gonna, gonna have to do that. Um, you know, there's, they're gonna have to provide clients with uh, appraisals that are suitable uh, to submit to, let's say, tax assessors and tax matters. Uh, all of those things are, are, are gonna come into play. 
So I just think that, you know, uh, an understanding of um, the, the mathematical side so they, they can com, 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 compute all this and just, you know, more more education. I think on the tail end of that, your, your question was, you know, what more can we do? Um, what more can appraisers do? I just think the more education and the more uh, 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 educational processes they can engage in, the better. And I think that that's going to be uh, very, very uh, important uh, as we move down the road along with this pandemic, because you know we really don't know where this is going to end up. We're we're hearing good things as far as you know vaccine availability, and hopefully there there's a light at the end of this dark tunnel. But in the meantime, you know we have to proceed with well, what if we can't get you know back to properties per se and and going inside physically to inspect? We have to have appraisers have to have those alternative methods. And I think that that's gonna be very important. So I think that's just one of many skills that appraisers have to, again, adapt to. Now you mentioned specifically uh, appraising for say tax appeal purposes. Now, uh, clearly uh, an, uh, an appraisal that a, an appraiser does for Fannie Mae is not what would have to be submitted to the local assessing authorities or the local taxing authorities. Right. So when you talk about education, what you're basically saying is, well, the foundation of appraisal is probably applicable pretty much across the board. The appraiser may have to learn some other techniques or other ways of presenting the interpretation and analysis of the data for clients of different types. Is that correct? And Mike, I think we, <laughs> I think somebody's internet just went down. <laughs> um, we'll pause for a second and see what we can get. Okay, we had a little computer glitch there for which I apologize. So Mike, uh, please uh, go ahead, thank you. Oh, no, that's okay, Tim. I, I know you were talking just about the, uh, uh, the uh, skills needed uh, that appraisers are going to have to uh, adhere to um, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, help or, you know, un understanding uh, the idea of uh, data and, 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 and statistics. And, um, you know, I just was uh, kind of uh, going in a direction where you were going when you and I talked about this before, that an appraiser may choose to inhabit the niche of specializing in appraisals for tax appeals. Those appraisers will have to provide clients with um, uh, appraisal suitables to submit to the county tax assessor as part of information uh, to lower the assessment on a property. Uh, so that was just kind of another area that, that we were going down. So you're, what you're basically saying is that is another skill set right. that once an appraiser has mastered it, basically becomes another source of income to the appraiser, correct? Right, right. Okay. And then you would apply the same logic, say, to uh, learning how to be uh, an expert witness uh, Correct. In, in, in working with uh, uh, attorneys and uh, court testimony and areas such as that, correct? Yes. And it's interesting that you would mention that, Tim, because I recently uh, talked to some attorneys uh, regarding being an expert witness. And, you know, one thing that was made clear that uh, uh, appraisers should assume that they could wind up in court. So they wanna prepare for it, you hope you don't, but you know, if, you, if your value of opinion is challenged, you, know, you may find yourself you know, sitting in the, the, in the witness stand and being uh, cross-examined by the, the attorney. So they have to prepare for that as well. And that's not a, a skill a lot of appraisers you know, polish up on, but that's another area where you, know, you have to think about and then you know, make sure that when you come into that courtroom, uh, you maintain that credibility. Well, that, that's interesting that you raise the issue that the appraiser needs to write the appraisal. And you're, of course, referring to basically any appraisal right. uh, as if the appraiser was going to end up uh, on the uh, uh, witness stand uh, on the hammer and anvil of cross-examination. And uh, that's uh, most appraisers. <laughs> most appraisers don't build that into their fees. So uh, no, no. 
that uh, th that goes back to uh, a very uh, specific uh, engagement letter saying that uh, you know the fee for the appraisal is whatever the fee for the appraisal is but if uh, a client you want me to go to court sure i'll be happy to but then the fee for that is insert humongous dollar va or value per hour here uh, okay right. that that certainly makes sense all right um you've spoken about uh, covid and and the changes that have taken place uh, in the appraisal uh, business and appraisal practice, quite frankly, right. in the last uh, 12 months, uh, last last nine months, the, the last three quarters of, of, of 2020. Some of, the, some of these changes have been, quite frankly, forced on us. And right. we right. have discovered that in many instances, it's not necessary to put boots in the living room uh, to uh, appraise a property. You know, sometimes you just have to. But uh, there are obviously there are occasions there are occasions and when that's not necessary. So, given all of the stresses that we've undergone because of uh, of COVID, how have appraisers benefited, if they have, from those changes and stresses, and how have those changes and stresses hurt appraisers? Well, I think. Uh... Jim, let me go along the lines of, uh, on the negative side, you know, how has this hurt? Well, obviously, um, you know, I, I don't have specific numbers on this. I, I am not making a, you know, a, a true factual, you know, account statement here, but, you know, I'm sure there are some businesses that have been hurt greatly. Uh, maybe some have had to shut down. Again, don't know that for a fact, but like other businesses, you know, appraising is, is really no different. There's going to be some some loss there uh, uh, somewhere, for the very simple reason uh, that maybe uh, a homeowner does not want a stranger coming into their house for fear of the virus and spreads and what have you. Wait a I'm minute, are, are you implying that appraisers are strange? <laughs> oh no 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 <laughs> no no no. Um, I, I've talked to many appraisers who say, hey, you know, if the owner doesn't want us in there, you know, we 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 can't go in there. Now, again, not going in physically to inspect the property, we have discovered ways that they can do that technologically. But still, uh, a lot of appraisers are, are used to that, and that's been effective. That's had kind of a, a negative effect. Um, you know, just the idea of, you know, in some cases, uh, not being able to do things the way they've been used to, we, we've talked about the adaptation process throughout the course of this broadcast. And in some cases, adaptation has become difficult. Um, so there, there are some negatives, just like everybody else. Uh, they, they've had to go through all that. I think on the, the plus side, uh, one person that I did talk to mentioned that if anything, COVID may have opened the door for more opportunity. Now we go back to what we've been talking about throughout. There's more opportunities now to learn, to get educated, to use tools that may not have been part of the appraiser's toolbox in the past, but now uh, they are discovering, uh, you know, maybe things about themselves they didn't think that they could do before, but now they can. Uh, this particular uh, individual said the, the, the COVID-19 pandemic has allowed those kinds of opportunities. Uh, doing what I'm doing right now, and I assume Tim, what you're doing, working remotely. A lot of people did not think that you know they would ever have to do that. But you know, to your um, a term that a lot has been forced upon us, and a lot has been forced upon appraisers, they're realizing that you know they can do this. They they don't necessarily have to go into the office. They can do their job remotely uh, or from an app or whatever that technology device is. So, and we've seen, you know, guidance come from the GSE. Spanny is always updating appraisers on what's what's going on and what you can and can't do. So there, there's that guidance as well. Um, so I think just, you know, moving forward and in an effort to, again, have appraisers remain relevant, uh, they just need to, I guess, accentuate the positive. It's very easy to look at the negative side and talk about what you know we don't have, but I think the emphasis of what we do have and what appraisers are able to do, I think that's going to 
keep things moving forward, keep businesses thriving and get us through this difficult time. And like I say, I don't know when this is all gonna end. And even when there is a break in the uh, pandemic and the virus, I think a lot of the opportunities that have been explored now, I think they're gonna remain in place, even when COVID may not be an issue. So that's the positive that I think COVID has uh, brought to the appraisers. And again, from the people that I've talked to, a lot of them are you know, taking advantage because, hey, this is what we have. This is the cards that we've been dealt. So let's just play them out and play them out to the best of our ability. Now you just mentioned adaptability and we had, uh, the, the question was in the context of, uh, we changes were forced on us. And then you mentioned adaptability. Now, Mike, do you think that adapting to the changes that were in many cases forced on us has shown appraisers that they are indeed capable of adapting, capable of changing, capable of modernizing? Or do you see once this is all over uh, a return to what amounts to the status quo? I, I think there'll be some uh, uh, indicators, Tim, of, of a return, but I think, and again, based on who I've talked to, I've heard and I've actually seen where, you know, appraisers adapting, you know, has made a difference. Uh, you know, I, right now we're in that mode of the, the new norm, <laughs> you know, and I think that we have seen uh, a lot of uh, activity that would suggest that appraisers are more than capable and have adapted uh, to all of the, the, the changes. And I just see that, uh, you know, talking with appraisers and I've talked with company CEOs and the things that they've introduced to appraisers, uh, I think that that um, uh, adaptation uh, is very, very evident. I'll, just, I'll mention one more thing. I don't know how much time we have. I'll mention one more thing that I thought very interesting when I was talking to people at the outset of all of this uh, COVID-19 and that we've seen a true coming together at least I have from my research within the industry. I've talked to people who have more than found it beneficial. And I think we can put this in the category of another one of those opportunities I mentioned before, where by way of Zoom or whatever technology platform they wanna use, they're talking to other people. They're talking to the competitor and say, hey, what are you guys doing? How are you able to get by or get through all of this? And one, one uh, a business person told me that, you know, in the past, it may not have been uh, preferable uh, to, you know, talk to the competition. But now that it's a matter of, you know, thriving, surviving, and moving forward, we're open to any and all ideas. And it, 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 it's, it's allowed people and appraisers to come together. You know, I, I've heard about ideas where there's, you know, morning coffee meetings and, and people are just sharing their ideas. So maybe that's another positive that, you know, uh, that's come about because of the pandemic. There's more of a coming together and everybody realizing that, hey, um, no idea uh, is too small or too insignificant. You know, bring it to the table and let's hear about it. Let's talk about it and let's see if this can work for us. You know, and I think appraisers have done that as well. Mike, in, in, in the relatively short context we have of, of this kind of presentation, you've covered a lot of area. Thank you very much. You've covered it with a great deal of insight as well. And for that, I thank you. If somebody okay. wanted to get in touch with you, perhaps to ask more questions, how would they do that? Well, they can certainly visit our, our website at uh, valuationreview.com. They can pull up uh, my publication and there's information and in, in how to, to reach me. Uh, I would not recommend uh, calling the office right now for obvious reasons, but my my email, my direct email uh, is m-h-o-l-z-h-e-i-m-e-r at octoberresearch, one word, dot com. Uh, I always, uh, in fact, in our, in our print publications, uh, in my editor's note, I always ask at the very end, you know, keep me updated on topics of interest to you. That's why I'm here. We wanna do whatever we can to help your business and bring the many ideas and concerns appraisers have 
to our audience. And I, my, my email is always open. Please feel free to contact me and uh, perhaps we can arrange an interview and you know, you can be featured in a, in a story as well that benefits appraisers. Mike, uh, thank you. Um, and yeah, yeah, you have reached out to me privately and uh, we've chatted privately and you've put some of my remarks into the magazine. Um, I know that before 2020, you did a lot of traveling and in 2020, you didn't do a lot of traveling. Right. Assuming things change in 2021, will you be doing any speaking or making any appearances or anything like that uh, where we could uh, get in touch with you personally? Well, I don't know about any specific um, uh, speaking engagements on the road. You know, when I when I travel to conferences, I'm just there as as a journalist. Uh, I have not been asked to speak. I I would certainly entertain that if I was given the opportunity. Uh, but you know, podcasts like this, Tim, I'm doing a lot more of. Uh, this is actually my third one where I get a chance to speak to the appraisal audience and community. I believe there's one more in the works uh, coming up in a few months or so, but um, yeah, I, I, I would love to get back on the road and, uh, I'm just trying to think what might be coming up. Um, just trying to think, uh, the valuation expo valuation 2020, uh, that might be the next one. Uh, the, the virtual ones are great. And I, I tip my hat to everybody that's been organizing those, uh, those are not easy to do. Uh, but, uh, I've, I've really benefited from that. Uh, but yeah, I hope to uh, get back on the road soon, uh, like everybody else. It's a lot better and it's just more personal to be able to shake someone's hand and, and share ideas. And uh, I, I have certainly benefited from that regarding my, my job at October Research. And uh, as far as uh, appearances like this, I would just say, hopefully I'll be coming to another podcast uh, in your neighborhood soon. <laughs> Good deal. Mike Holzheimer, thank you. October Research and Valuation Review Magazine. We appreciate it very much. Please let me extend my personal best to you and to your family. And with any luck at all, we'll get to see each other in April in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi at the Appraisers Trade Show and Conference. So Mike, again, thank you very much. It's always an honor. I appreciate it. That would that'd be great, Tim. I appreciate the opportunity you gave me and I wish you and your family and the listening audience uh, continued good health and please be safe. Thank you, Mike. We'll be in touch. See you later. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. We'll be in touch.